All right, here we are again, Mike Mazzalongo, BibleTalk.tv. We're doing our uh, small group of Bible study uh, entitled, How to Love Someone You Hate. This is lesson number six uh, in that series, uh, and uh, it's entitled, Do Something Beautiful, Do Something Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, if you have been in this class, and if you've actually tried to follow the instructions given here, you've probably not noticed much of a difference in the people that you, you know, that you can't stand. However, there's probably already a difference in you. Uh, the word that I give you is patience. Uh, it's a slow process. You have, to be, you have to be patient because you're dealing with very strong uh, emotions um, in this uh, process of trying to love someone that you can't stand, someone that you hate. Now, most of what we've learned so far has had to do with what we think, especially what we think about our enemy or the persons that offend us. And again, just a, a brief review, uh, bless and, and curse not. In other words, think and say good, or if you can't think of anything good, uh, then say uh, something neutral uh, about this person. Even if you can't think or say something good, you can always uh, pray for this person. You can always pray that God uh, does good things uh, for this uh, individual. Uh, second um, step in our strategy, walk a mile in their shoes. Try seeing things from the other person's perspective. Even if you can't quite understand, the exercise of trying will help cool the fires of anger and frustration. And then number three, what we talked about last time, never take your own revenge. It's tempting to get even, but if you do, you're interfering with God's justice. Justice belongs to the Lord and allowing God to punish is an act of faith that really costs you something, but at the same time, uh, really demonstrates the quality of your faith. So uh, today we're going to move from how we should be thinking about our enemies to what we should do in order to go from hating to loving them. Um, so uh, we look at Romans chapter uh, 17 uh, B. Uh, Paul writes, respect what is right in the sight of all men. Uh, the word respect here uh, means uh, to be careful to do or perceiving uh, beforehand. Another translation uh, actually clarifies what Paul means here. It's the uh, Christian Counselor's New Testament. And in that translation, this verse is interpreted this way. It says, plan ahead to do what is fine in the sight of all men. So this brings us to step number four in learning to love those we hate. Simply stated, step number four is this, plan ahead to do something beautiful for your enemy in the sight of all men. Instead of responding uh, with your emotions, which are hurt and anger, instead of doing that, plan ahead to what your response is going to be. This is the first part of this admonition. And so when offended or feeling hatred and anger towards another, sit down and plan ahead what you're going to do. Now, what good are you planning in order to overcome this evil? You know, this is why James uh, tells us in James chapter one, verse 19, to be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. Uh, this is why he gives us uh, this admonition. In other words, we need to take uh, time to plan a proper, um, a proper response uh, to uh, the person who's uh, offended us. Paul explains this idea in another letter when he says in uh, 1 Thessalonians, uh, chapter five, he says, see that no one repays another with evil for evil, but always seek after that which is good for one another and for all people. Now, Paul is saying here, don't just seek to do the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> and when we're offended, usually the first thing that comes to mind is revenge of some kind. No, he says, search to find just the right thing for this person. Uh, so we continue in the cycle if we don't take control of the situation by making a plan. Usually it starts with passive things like not talking about them negatively uh, and so on and so forth before, before we can get to you know, doing aggressive good. The second part, he says, 
do something beautiful. That's the second part, okay? Make a plan, do something beautiful. Don't just uh, uh, do any old thing, do something wonderful, something beautiful, uh, which is another word for fine or right. Don't just settle for the right thing to do, go the second mile and do the beautiful thing. Uh, there's the right thing and then there's the beautiful thing that we can do. Of course, this is a radical teach because it perfectly, it's perfectly in line with the radical act of God in saving us through the cross of Jesus Christ. I mean, we acted ugly towards God and he responds not with just the right or the just thing, he comes back with a beautiful and a kind gesture by, by sending Jesus to die for us. This was his plan for us, his beautiful plan. And so to do something beautiful for the one we hate, is, it's, it's easy to preach, but it's very, very hard to do in practice. Not impossible, but, but it's difficult. We, we water down you know, Jesus' admonition to love our enemies by saying that loving them only means not to wish them harm or, or just praying for them. But is this all that you do for the ones you actually love? I mean, wish them no harm or pray for them? Of course not. Jesus, and in the passage here, Paul, uh, get to the radical Christianity point when they tell us that healing relationships requires concrete, aggressive, uh, uh, demonstrated love. In other words, it requires concrete action. Yes, we begin with the things we think about. We begin with our mouth, you know, you know, controlling what we say, but eventually we have to move towards an action of some kind to reach the final goal of actually loving our uh, enemy. And then the passage, the third part, uh, and that, the third part is uh, plan ahead, do something beautiful for your enemy. The third part, in the sight of all. Uh, at first, you might think this is you know, just, to, uh, uh, just to humble you, uh, to make you feel humiliation by doing something beautiful for someone who wronged you and doing it publicly. On the contrary, the purpose is to demonstrate strength and to glorify God, uh, to witness powerfully to our enemy that the love of Christ is stronger than the offense or the hurt um, uh, that we feel. Uh, to do it in public, you know, the beautiful thing, to do it in public causes others to take notice, but to take notice that your response is unlike any they've ever seen in a similar situation. If you're wrong and get a plan and, and, and come back with something beautiful, others will say, well, I just can't believe what this person did, or what a good person, or man, that's, that's true Christianity. You see, people who are not Christians, they may not be Christians themselves, but they know a Christian act when they see it. They can tell what genuine Christianity looks like and sounds like. And so the point is not to win over the other person, although this may happen. The point is to show the other person and everyone else watching that evil did not overcome good. In the end, good, your good, the good that you demonstrate is the winner. So do something beautiful. What are some examples of doing something beautiful? Well, I have two that we may be familiar with. Um, the first one, uh, it took place on October the 2nd, 2006. A man uh, that you see here, Charles Carl Roberts, uh, who was a milk truck delivery uh, person, uh, he took a once a room a schoolhouse in the Amish community of Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania, he took a one room schoolhouse hostage. He then proceeded to shoot 10 little girls aged between six and 13, uh, wounding seven and killing three uh, before taking his uh, own life. Now, as a response uh, to this tragedy, the Amish community later tore down the old schoolhouse where the children were wounded and killed, and they built a new one and named it the New Hope School. Now, what was really amazing, however, was the response that the Amish community made towards the killer and his family, who were not themselves Amish. The Roberts family spokesman said that only hours after the killing, the killer's family received visits from their Amish neighbors offering comfort and forgiveness. 
One Amish man held Robert's sobbing father in his arms for an hour, comforting him. Could you imagine uh, your child, your grown up son doing something terrible like this, how you would feel as a parent? The Amish community then did something, uh, not just one thing, but several beautiful things in the sight of all. For example, they invited Roberts's widow to the funeral of the children that he killed and allowed her to write and read a letter of apology on behalf of her family. Then 30 people from the Amish community attended Roberts's funeral. And then the Amish community set up a charitable fund for the family of the shooter, since he himself left behind a widow and three fatherless children. I mean, it makes our petty quarrels and responses pale in comparison, doesn't it? But what a beautiful, what a beautiful public act uh, was made by this, uh, uh, this uh, Amish uh, community. Uh, a second example of um, uh, uh, doing something beautiful in the sight of all. Uh, Amber Goyer, uh, Geyer, I believe is how you pronounce her name. That's her in the picture. Uh, she was a Dallas police officer who shot and killed a man named Botham Jean uh, when she mistakenly entered his apartment thinking that she was in her own apartment one floor down and thought that he was an intruder. Uh, she was uh, charged and convicted and sentenced to 10 years in prison for the, uh, for the shooting. But then in the middle of this a terribly sad and depressing situation, something beautiful happened. Uh, Brant Jean, the murdered man's younger brother, stepped forward and hugged the convicted officer and told her that he uh, forgave her and even encouraged her to believe in Jesus and to receive forgiveness uh, from him. What the media did not report was that the deceased and his brother and his family were all members of the Church of Christ. So uh, based on these beautiful actions, I have a, an assignment that I would like you to do, a kind of a homework assignment. I want you to think up of a strategy of something that you yourself could do for your enemy that would be beautiful in the sight of all. Now, I'm not asking you to actually do it, just think of what you could do if circumstances or your heart would permit it. Now, I'm not going to check or correct the homework. I'm not going to ask you know, people to share that information. This is totally a private thing, uh, a personal exercise that you can, uh, that you can do in order to, uh, in order to uh, help you uh, reach that point uh, of loving your uh, enemy. Now, if you want more information on forgiveness, I encourage you to go to uh, our BibleTalk.tv website and you can download. There are two lessons there that talk about forgiveness. One's entitled Understanding Forgiveness and the other is entitled The Mechanics of Forgiveness. Uh, I think these uh, would give you uh, a lot of information about the topic of forgiveness. Okay, so we're gonna do the questions for our small group discussion and I will see you next time. Question number one, describe some of the changes in your thinking since the beginning of the course. Question number two, when you are wronged, how do you usually respond emotionally? Question number three, what is your typical reaction when you see the person next time? Question number four, what are some of the beautiful things that could be done for the person you are at odds with? 